Okay, hopefully now my screen is in the right spot. Um, just to let you know, I do have a chat window on my other screen, so I will be looking to see if you have questions or comments as we go along. Um, so uh, this is how to get 100% of your students certified in Adobe Photoshop. Hopefully that's my goal. Uh, hopefully if you teach uh, Photoshop or any of these Adobe or Microsoft, anything, um, you want 100% of your students certified. So I, when I go to certifications like uh, conferences like this, I always wonder who is this person and why should I listen to them? So I figured I'd go ahead and answer that up front. Um, I am currently teaching at... Uh, a high school in East Texas. If you know where Shreveport, Louisiana is, I'm over the border about one mile in on the Texas side. I teach in a little school called Wascom, which I'll talk about a little bit more here in a second. Um, I have a bachelor's, I have a master's with technology integration. It has been my goal for the past 11 years to try to get more people interested in technology and one way to do that, I guess, is to get my kids interested. If I can get my kids interested, maybe I can go back and get my other teachers interested as well. I have been in the classroom for 11 years. Nine of those have been teaching CTE technology courses. Um, people always ask me, what do you teach? Easiest thing for me to tell them is technology, all things technology. I am the technology teacher at Wascom High School. You can see all the subjects I have listed. Um, this year, I had seven preps. Uh, everything I had to create on my own, <laughs> my own curriculum, my own tasks, my own projects, my own everything. Um, so let me see if I can kind of shorten that list a little bit. This year, I think I taught everything other than the top two things, not the eighth grade algebra. That's what I started teaching. Those of you who teach a test the subject, bless you. That's why I got out. And the audio video production, I did that at my old school. But I did do graphic design, advanced graphic design, the principles, uh, middle school BIM, dual credit BIM through a local college, TSTC, yearbook, and robotics all this year. Um, not only did I teach those subjects, I was really big at getting my students certified. That was my goal. I wanted to make sure all of my students had a certification in something. So I offered Microsoft Word, Word Expert, Excel, Excel Expert, PowerPoint. I'm trying to get a student to access. Um, I only do access to five time and with COVID, you know, everything kind of messed up. I will answer that question in just a second. And in an Adobe side, I teach Photoshop, Illustrator, and Premiere Pro. BIM is business information management. That's what we call our classes, or that here anyway, uh, my Microsoft stuff. That's that's where I teach my Microsoft work. Uh, personally, over the past nine years, I have gained over 50 industry certifications. I took my MTA yesterday and passed that. So I think I'm up to 52 officially. I'm, I'm somewhere in there. Um, over the past five years, I've had 100% of my students passing the Adobe certifications I offer and 100% of my students passing my Microsoft, which is really good for my little school because they don't really offer too many others here. So um, I wanted to kind of give a little bit of information about my journey, where I came from, how I started this whole process, because it's been a ride, let me tell you. Um, I started off in 2011 at my former school that I taught at and I have on there I lied I did I lied in my interview um they I walked in it, it was for a business profession or a business position and I thought okay Microsoft so I can do Microsoft I'm easy I'm good I walk in and they also say well we want to do some graphic design how are you in Photoshop I'm like oh, yeah I think I'm okay I had never even opened the program in my life up to that point my high school did not offer it um, I went to college. I didn't have time for it to be in my college. I did some computer science stuff and some math stuff and chemistry. That was my focus. Never opened it. Um, so they gave me the job. I walked in and I did not have any instructional materials given to me. I didn't have any instructional materials left in my room. I didn't have anything. I had to go and find it. So everything that I've done, I have either created or I used my techno wiz my techno know-how, uh, went online and I found it. <clears throat> I think my main thing is I was just able to put it together for my students to be able to figure out and use and do, be successful at it. So my very first year that I taught uh, the, my, uh, the graphic design stuff, I taught Photoshop only a whole year long. We were supposed to do our certifications. 
uh, someone at the school dropped the ball and we could never get it working. That's okay. Give me a chance to actually learn the program. Second year, I started giving the certifications. Um, I say not bad. I only had about an 85% passing rate because I'm a perfectionist. I want everybody to pass. But I guess, you know, a couple of students not passing the second year. I'm trying to teach it and learn it myself. I, I guess that's not too terribly bad. Uh, so I, I retook the test myself. I made mental notes of everything that... I didn't really see my students excelling at. I found uh, assignments online to get my students more interested in those things. I changed up a few of my rubrics and I've just kind of been changing my curriculum ever since then. Uh, so about my little bitty school, uh, we are a 3A school. If you're in the Texas area, you know what that is. We're, we go from 1A, I think we're up to 6A now. We're, we're 3A. My high school had a total enrollment of 278 students in 2021. Our senior class had like 76 students. So we're not a big, big school at all. Um, generally, our class sizes were between five and 17 students. Uh, my first year here, I had a couple classes with one student. But 17 is our max, especially with the COVID uh, stuff that we had to do this past year. They tried to cap it at 17. Just to kind of let you know, uh, my graphic design class, I had 14 students. My business information class had 12. So not huge classes, very workable with what I have because my room is set up really oddly too. So in total, I had 26 students in a certification class. 100% of my students passed at least one of those certifications. I had students coming in, transferring from one class to another. They were at home for COVID stuff and came in. So i, I this year was kind of a wash. I was happy if every student at least got one. Um, and all 64 certifications were earned in my classes this past school year, which I think is amazing. It's awesome. Um, I'm happy with that number. Hopefully I'll get a little more next year. So I, I apologize for all the writing on this one. I hate having a lot of writing on uh, slides, but I couldn't help with this one because there's a lot of information as far as like Texas goes. Uh, so why do we do our certifications in Texas? I'll be honest, I do not know about the other states. That's just way too much information for me to try to get into. Um, but I did want to let those of you guys who are away know about our certifications. Um, in Texas, certifications play a part in our school grade. We, uh, we are currently at an A through F grading system right now, just like our kids get. Our certifications are calculated into what's called the CCMR score. That stands for Career College Military Readiness. Um, so my CTE classes, my certifications fall into that. So my goal is to try to get our CCM, CCRM score as high as I can. Um, they increase that score by taking and passing dual credit classes, which I said I did teach dual credit last year, and so that helped with that as well. Taking and passing an AP or IB test, earning high enough on our SAT, ACT, or TSIA scores, our test, earning our industry certification, following the CTE pathway. And so in our case, that's three or four classes following the same thing. So they can't jump around and do ag one year and culinary the next year and technology the next year. That doesn't work. Or if they actively enlist in the military. So if we can get our students to, to do any of those things, our CTE our score is higher. Um, last year, 2020, my school earned a B. When I broke down the numbers, so Texas is really weird. We get our score last year, but they had to look at the previous year's information to get that score. So in 2020, they had to look at the 2018-2019 scores to calculate the 2020 grade. Um, this year, the 2021, they'll have to look at 2019-2020 to give us that year. If you followed that, good for you. I just it, it took me a while to finally figure out what Texas is doing. Um, so in 2018, 2019, 17.2% of the graduating seniors had earned an industry certification. That's, uh, that's out of the entire school. 14% of those students were mine. Uh, we do have industry certifications in ag. I think they have welding. Um, I think they just started culinary. No, not culinary. Um, floral design, and our health people do a couple of other things. So out of those classes, 14% of the 17.2% were my students earning certifications. Based on my calculations, if I had not had any of my students earn any certifications, our school or my campus would have been a C campus. So having my students do these certifications helped Wascom High School become a B campus instead of a C. 
for this current year, the only information I have is 24% uh, of the students who were in certifications were mine. Out of all of the campus, all the school stuff that I said, 24 were mine. Next year, so far, already 17% uh, of the graduating seniors have earned certifications with me. And I will have a lot more that I will be teaching this year. So hopefully we'll be able to get our numbers up and get them going. I just wanted to give a little bit of background information because we are a small school to let you know why we do the things that we do. Uh, so one of the things that I did want to make sure to say is I'd, I've heard it in all the other certification or all the other uh, conferences that I've been in. I just want to make sure that I tell you that you need to take the test. If you have not taken the test, it's going to be really hard to figure out what your students need to know. Um, I Honestly, I take the test every single year just before my students do, just to remind myself, oh, yeah, we did have something like that. And, oh, yeah, we do kind of need to do that. So please, 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 if you haven't taking the test, make sure you get in there and do that. Um, as I have been taking the test and going through, I have noticed that there are some certain things, certain focuses that um, I noticed that are on the test. And so that's kind of what I focused on. So pixel, well, I added the pixels in there because I think my students didn't have some place to start, but layers, layer masks, colorizing, and clippy masks. Honestly, when you boil the test down, that, in my opinion, that is what I see most on that test. So if the kids can get those four things, they really have it made. Um, and everything else is in G-Metrics or other assignments that I add in there. So I do use G-Metrics as well. I do teach Photoshop. I start, I'm just going to use uh, January. If I start teaching Photoshop in January, we're usually done teaching and doing our projects by February. That's when we have our spring break. <laughs> so our winter break, sorry. We have a winter break and a spring break. So we're done by our winter break in February. When we come back, I have them go into G-Metrics and do the G-Metrics practice tests. And then they're testing before spring break in March. So three months to get through all, all of this and my students are getting certified. Uh, the other thing I want to say before I start giving you guys the website for my curriculum and all the information because I'm sure that's what you're here for. I kind of approach this as not trying to get my students to earn a uh, 1,000. I mean, it would be awesome if they get 1,000s. I have students earn, I think the highest last year was at 970 something. So it's really awesome if they get that high. My main goal is to get them a 700 so they can pass. I don't know who else out there use it, but whenever I was in college, we said D is for diploma. You know, do <laughs> we just need to get that minimum standard to pass? Uh, when I was teaching math, I was trying to get my students to pass that test with a little bit of a cushion, of course, but there's no way that I'm going to get every single student to ace it. That's not my concern. My concern is to get them to pass it. So yes, there are things that are on these tests that I don't necessarily cover in these four different sections. Um, all of the rest of it, I either talk about whenever we go through the projects or we bring up in G-Metrics. So this is the link to the site. If you want to go ahead and type it in, I just use a, a Wix, Wix.com. Very simple. There's not much on there. But if you want to go ahead and type that in, it is case sensitive. Um, so it's 3DL as in llama, DBS3. That will take you to my site that I used. It was very hard to find a place for me to add a zipped folder. <laughs> so Wix was the only place I could use. Hopefully it works. If it doesn't, oh, I should have done that. I apologize. Thank you. I wasn't thinking. So Christopher put the link in there for me in the chat. <laughs> I appreciate that. If it does not work, please let me know. <laughs> it worked for me earlier, so that's all I can really hope for. We'll go ahead and stop this for a second since it's up there now. Yay, it works. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste that again. There you go. Try that and see if that one works. Oop, I hit the wrong button. I'm. It's been a while since we've used this system, so I'm trying to get back into it and learn it. 
I will. It should be at the bottom of my uh, Wix website. If you scroll down to the bottom, it should be there. And it is going to be my presentation. If you give me a second. I will put it back up there. Okay, so very, 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 very simple. I just needed place. So if you scroll down, um, I put a big button there. Hopefully you wouldn't miss it. <laughs> Download file. And I went ahead and put my uh, name and my information down here at the bottom as well. Uh, the first one, the J.I. Robinson at wascomisd.net is my current email address. I'm hoping I might be possibly somewhere else next year. I'm not really sure. So if you don't hear back from me, I also went ahead and put my personal email on there as well. I do get back with people whenever they email me, usually very, very, very quickly. Okay. Try one more. Okay. So when you click on the download button, hopefully it gave you a zip folder. I hope you're able to unzip it. If not, if you're having an issue, please let me know. I will uh, make sure that you get the files somehow. Okay, so I was asked, how do you distribute assignments and information to students? Uh, we are a Google classroom or Google district, so I use Google. Everything goes into Google. Um, I put their assignments into Google. I give them their due dates, and they turn it back into me through Google. Uh, Google is the only one, only LMS that I've been able to use where my students are able to turn in the AI files and the PS files or PSD files. Otherwise, I'd have to do email, which I did my first year, and that was a nightmare. <laughs> so if if you're trying to get your students to uh, turn things in to you so you can look at it, Google is the way to go. So when you open my folder, I have it set up into, uh, I tried to, hopefully they're in order on your screen. They are on mine, so I'm gonna go for it. Um, I put things in order kind of how I go through them. I put in an intro, so before I even start anything, um, we open up Photoshop and I do a ducky assignment. It's very simple, it gets the students, Oh, I had to extract it first. Um, I, I just, it gets my students into Photoshop. They can see what Photoshop looks like. I talk about the different aspects. Like I said, you need to take the test because you need to know the terminology. So we talk about the different parts of the screen, the toolbar, the panels or the panes and how they might see it differently in the test. Um, I go through with some of the simpler tools. I think they're simpler tools like the magic wand tool and we do some painting. So we put a duck, we shrink the duck, we learned to keep it in proportion. Uh, we stick it in a corner. They learn to duplicate the duck into like a tic-tac-toe board. Uh, we draw lines and then I just go in and we do filters, simple filters. They're funny. Uh, the kids get to see what some of those filters can do and they remember them later because they want to use them on different projects. Uh, so that's just my, my introduction to everything before we really do much. Um, the kids get the ducky picture and I typically don't give them the directions on this one until after I'm done for my students who are late. Um, otherwise, I'll have those students who think they know what they're doing. They'll try to get ahead and they realize very quickly that they don't really know what's going on. So usually I, I just give my students the picture to start off with on that one. Um, then we get into pixels. I have four different pixel projects that I give my kids. I, I, it may sound silly, I guess, maybe, I don't know. I want my students to know where Photoshop or what type of Photoshop, what type of documents Photoshop gives you. I'm so sorry. So that is one of the questions. Actually, I think there's like four or five questions on there. Um, what type of document do you get with Photoshop? It is a raster. It's raster based. So we talk about what raster means. We talk about a pixel. We talk about shrinking, enlarging, enlarging pictures. So we go into all of that up front. Um, it's not really, you know, I don't really have curriculum lessons. My students take notes. We just do all of the work, but I'm able to go in there and talk about all of those types of questions that are, we hopefully, if you've taken the test, you know, we're already on the test. Um, so they start off simple by creating a pixel man. They get a little more difficult by creating a pixel floppy. Um, the hardest one, I will tell you up front, is the pixel car. My kids don't like it. Um, if you have your kids do it, they will not like it. It is very difficult, but I start off easy and get harder and harder. And then the test is Luigi. So if you're a Mario and Luigi fan, that's the test, which is so much simpler than the car is. I kind of want to make it a little hard so when they get the test, they're like, ah, I can do this. So we do our pixels and that probably takes me anywhere between a week and a half to two weeks, depending on that car. 
I kind of, I, I let my kids take their time. Um, I give them the front one first. And then as they finish, I go ahead and post the next one, post the next one, just so that they have them all ready to go. When I get into layers, I have three different assignments for them. I start off very basic with what is a layer. Uh, this one has nine steps on it. So type their name and then we'd like play with the colors. And I'm at, that's really all it is. It is typing in layers. Layers two, it gets into a little more detail where they have to uh, start rotating things. So we bring in the control T and let them see what the transform command does. Layers three, uh, we had something a long time ago with the 12 most popular word or powerful words. These are words that they see on the SAT test and their star test. I figure eh, why not? It's still it's still relevant. It still works. Um, so they use all the stuff that they've learned, but they get to choose their own fonts, colors, things like that. And then they do a layers test where it's all about them. So they put their name in the middle and then they have to put adjectives about themselves around the outside. I do give them a warning up front that they will have to know what an adjective is. And I explain what an adjective is that they have to have, I think, 10. So start thinking about things that describe you and so, you know, so forth and so on. Uh, but that's layers. Very simple, very basic, but that's layers. Then I have my students get into layer masks, and I have two assignments here. Uh, the layer mask one is the one that I direct teach for them. So all of these, like at the beginning, I do with my students. I do the first assignment, and then they do the next ones. And then I do the next first one, and they do the next ones. So the layer masks one, I direct teach that one with them. They have three objects, a tea, a muffin, and a strawberry, and they learn how to use layer masks. I talk about what a layer mask is. There's a website. If you just Google how to use a layer mask, there's a really good example of a wedding uh, where I talk about being a photographer. And, you know, if I'm a photographer and I mess up and I erase the woman's veil, they won't pay me. They'll sue me because I destroyed their picture and so forth and so on. Uh, and I explain how the layer mask allows me to go in there and kind of hide that information and bring it back if I mess up or the bride decides she wants something shown. So I actually get to show them uh, with a picture example of what layer masks look like. So I do this one with them. They have those three objects that they had to put into a mask. And then they go into layer mask two where they have to now take four pictures. One, two, three. Oh, I missed a picture. I'll have, I will put the fifth picture up there might have to re-download it, but I will put the fifth picture up there because it is missing one. I apologize. Um, they have to take these five pictures and they have to think about the order of their layers because in this case, it might be kind of hard to see on that little screen, but the radio is actually on top of the boot. So they have to go back to the layers and think about what do I have to put on top of what. So the radio goes on top of the boots and the boot have to go has to go underneath the camera, but the camera is on top of this. So they have to think about the order of the layers and where they go from there. And then of course the masking all the way around it to make it look like a cohesive picture. I don't do a layer mask test because I go into the colorizing option after that and I do a test after all of this stuff. So I have using the magic wand, you know, there are multiple ways to uh, color things and you have to know several different ways for the test. So we go into a black and white house and they have to color the black and white house using only the magic wand. Then I say they have to use the pen tool. We have a picture of a guy playing a guitar using only the pen tool. And then for their practice, this one is a little bit bigger. I give them several pictures, pure black and white pictures for them to choose from. They have to choose two. So I give them options. They have to choose two. Um, and the directions are in the file for you. But they have to choose two and they have to color the entire thing. They must use the pen tool somewhere. They must use the magic wand tool somewhere so they can prove to me that they use, uh, that they know how to use both of those tools. And there's my ma uh, masking and colorizing test. They have to take a picture of a black and white baby. Ooh, it's over on that screen. Black and white baby. They have to colorize that entire thing. I give them a picture of a football, a puppy, and a soccer ball, and they have to put them on the screen. I try to tell them it needs to look as realistic as possible. So now they're taking the layer masking, the colorizing, and actually order of layers and kind of sticking all that stuff together and showing me that they can do all of that at once. Uh, the last thing that I do with my kids is clipping masks. I kind of lead up to it and tell my kids, this is the hardest thing you'll ever have to do. And if you know what clipping masks are, it's simple. It's right click, click, and you're done. Um, 
but I, I tell them it's the hardest things that better really pay, pay attention because if they blink, they're going to miss it. Um, we, I show them how to do it on a shape. I show them how to do clipping masks on text. Then they have to put all that together and create a postcard. And then they have a test where they, again, use their name, use their name. They put pictures for each one of their letters um, and then a symbol that represents them. So they get to personalize it there at the end. And really, over the past five years, that's all I have been doing with my students. And that's really the only direct instruction that they need. I did go ahead and throw extra assignments in there because you you never know. I mean, you know, one school year, you have a group of kids that are really, really bright and high performing. And then you have the other side that's not. So I did throw in a couple of the extra assignments that I use. Um, so I try to put a little bit of information in there so that you can see uh, Christmas card. I did different types of fonts. I really like about Halloween time. I really like doing guts because it kind of makes the word look like guts. Somebody's guts were out in front of them. Um, hero text, they have a whole bunch of different things that you do with the hero text that might help with the students reinforce the masking and things like that. Um, and then bubble text is just kind of to give them something different. Halloween, I put masking. That one is a, I'd call it Jemima phobia. Whenever I have my kids save it, that's what I call it is Jemima phobia. I take a stack of pancakes. There you go. Take a stack of pancakes and a piranha. And they end up with something, hopefully, that looks like this in the end. Uh, pancakes eating them. So they really love the name Jemima phobia with that one. Uh, in your hand so they take something and mask and they put the globe or an eye or this one a, a city in a bubble holding their hands I went ahead and gave you the picture of the hand in the city you can have the kids do their own or that could be the assignment after this one okay now take your hands do do some kind of pose and I want you to hold something in your hand and have them practice it and do it for you um, I threw my midterm in there it's a biohazard symbol that's what I use oh yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, that's what I use for my midterm. They have to create a biohazard symbol and turn that into me. So I went ahead and, and threw that one in there just in case you needed it or wanted it. Uh, I don't usually use that one as a standard document or standard assignment. It's just a little more advanced for that. That's why you go ahead and use it as my midterm. Um, out of bounds, making things look like they are coming out of a picture frame. I gave you two, I gave a dolphin that looks like it's coming out of a picture frame that way. And my kids really like the Spider-Man. Oh, it's a word document. I can't give a preview. Uh, Spider-Man looks like he's coming out of a laptop. And then I have my kids create their own 3D image based on that. And then a uh, puzzle with the clippy mask, a smurf yourself thing. I make my kid, I tell my kids are going to get nose jobs and turn them into smurfs. And then a thankful thing for a, a Thanksgiving project that you could do. So I went ahead and threw those extra assignments in there in case you need something to fill in a gap, or maybe I have something that you don't have there, there. Um, I will say that I use, uh, I, I only use these seven steps seven groups of assignments and that's it the rest of everything comes from g metrics i do use g metrics i'm a strong believer in g metrics it has helped my students the most because it it is an example of what the test looks like um, my kids it's a very small school they do not really have access to online tests the only online test they do is the ap test and very few students actually take an ap test so I try to get my students in the testing environment or something as, as close to the testing environment as I can. In this case, it is the G-Metrics. Um, I go through the G-Metrics with my students. I tell them to stay with me. We talk about the questions as we go through. I give them an opportunity to see if they can answer the question without me telling them. There are some questions in the G-Metrics that I don't really teach, like direct teach. But I say, you know what? You guys are going to tell me how to do this one. And so they step up to the plate and they tell me, well, that sounds like you know, we're wanting to change something. So let's go to the edit menu and see. And they're able to walk me through. So based on how I teach my students and the verbiage that I use and the directions that I give them, they're able to figure out how to do a lot of that stuff on the G-Metrics without that direct instruction. So I do it the first time with my students. I then make them go back two more times and complete it on their own. Um, and then I take it to, and 
on their own in practice mode. And then I have them go back one more time and do it in the testing mode and they get a test grade from that. So with the Gmetrics, I love Gmetrics, it grades it for you. And you also get grades from it. So they get three daily grades and one major grade from the Gmetrics. So we do all the practices that are available and you know, different years give you different ones. So I don't really know how many are, are, are on there now, um, but we do all of those. And then I have my students go in and they test. And I will say usually about five, five or six of my students pass the first time and then the rest of them usually get it the second time. The first time they're usually not used to the time limit. Um, I do use the time limit on the geometrics, but let's face it, by the time you've done those same questions four times in a row, you know the answers. So they usually go through the geometrics pretty quickly. They get into the test. They're not quite really sure. So they run out of time. That's usually why my students don't past the first time but then they go back they know what to expect now they kind of know what types of questions that they're going to see they know to focus on their timing uh that watch the timer on the on the screen and they're usually a lot better at the end and we have a whole bunch of time left over and that's really the only thing that i have oh i'll go and put this one back up there so i put my presentation back up on the bottom of my screen. Uh, so you can, again, see my contact information. <laughs> if you if you need to contact me, trust me, I'm there. I will get you. I'll answer anything that I can, help you out any way that I can, usually relatively quickly. Uh, please do not hesitate to reach out and email me. I promise I won't leave you hanging. If I don't know something, I'll tell you I don't know, and I'll figure it out, and I'll still give you an answer. But... Uh, that's really all I have. I guess 